Okay, everybody, so NVIDIA just dropped their insanely impressive Tesla FSD competitor at CES. It's called Appamayo, and Jensen Wong called it the ChatGPT moment for physical AI, which is a pretty bold statement. But Elon Musk responded with something that I think most people missed. He basically said, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, good luck with that, because there's this thing called the long tail problem. And Tesla has years of data on this long tail problem, and NVIDIA is just getting started. Let me show you why this gap matters way more than anyone's talking about. But before I get into all this technical stuff and all of that, I got to say something. This competition between Jensen and Elon between NVIDIA and Tesla, this is one of the most incredible things happening right now. And I'm not exaggerating. Just think about it for a second. You have two of the most brilliant entrepreneurs on the planet, probably in the history of technology. And I'm not saying that lightly. You would probably agree with that statement. And they're both going after the same prize, which is full autonomy in robotaxis and in physical AI and AI chips, whatever you want to call this ecosystem. And as a consumer, as someone who actually wants self-driving cars to exist, this is freaking amazing because competition is how we get there faster. Competition is how prices come down. Competition is how safety improves. So even though I'm going to spend most of this video explaining why Nvidia has a massive uphill battle, and it really is massive, I want to be clear, I'm rooting for both of them. The world needs both of them to succeed. And the fact that we have Jensen and Elon both obsessed with the same problem, that's a gift. That's like having two freaking Michael Jordans in the same league. How often does that happen? Almost never. <laughs> Okay, so let me actually explain what NVIDIA actually announced because it's actually really impressive. Appamayo is this new AI system designed for autonomous driving. It's what they call a vision language action model, which basically means it can see the world, reason about it in natural language, and then take actions based on that reasoning. That's pretty sophisticated stuff, honestly. And the first car shipping with it is the Mercedes-Benz CLA later this year. So this is not vaporware. This is actually happening. It's a real product. It's a real car. It's on real roads in 2026. And and Jensen was not shy about it at all. He's not even a little bit shy about it. He's straight up said that this is going after Tesla's full self-driving. He called Elon's FSD stack world-class and state-of-the-art, but then said, okay, we're coming for you. And I got to respect that. That's Everybody has to respect that. That's freaking awesome. <laughs> you really got to respect someone who looks at what Tesla has built over the last decade and we're talking about billions of dollars of investments in years and years of work, millions of miles, billions of miles of data, and says, yeah, okay, we're gonna compete with that, sure, let's go. That takes a lot of confidence, delusion, we'll find out. <laughs> but it's also interesting that they're making it open source. They're putting it on hugging face. They're releasing about 1,700 hours of driving data. They are trying to be the Android of autonomy while Tesla is the iPhone. Tesla's FSD is a closed system. It's a vertically integrated, all that stuff, Tesla owns the manufacturing, the chip, the software, while NVIDIA wants to get this thing on basically every other car that's not a Tesla. That's their goal. That's their long-term goal. And that's actually a legitimate strategy. If you look at Android, Android won the phone market by volume. Maybe Jensen thinks it can do the same thing with cars. Get every automaker in the world using NVIDIA's system, and then it doesn't matter if Tesla is technically better because NVIDIA is freaking everywhere. That's not a crazy theory. Now, what Elon said in response is very interesting. He said, and this is the exact quote, what they will find is that it's easy to get to 99% and then super super hard to solve the long tail of the distribution. And I want to break down what that actually means because I think it's the most important thing to understand about self-driving cars, the most important thing. And also why this race isn't as close as the headlines make it seem. And also why Elon has been wrong about his own timelines ever since 2019 and even longer because the long tail problem doesn't just apply to Nvidia, it applies to everybody, including Tesla. Okay, so the long tail, what is it? Why is this such a big deal? Why does it keep making Elon wrong about his predictions? All right, so imagine you're training an AI to drive. You show it millions of examples. Here's the red light, you stop. Here's the green light, you go. Here's a car in front of you, you slow down. Here's a stop sign, you stop. Here's a pedestrian in a crosswalk, you wait for them. And the AI gets really good at this stuff, like really, really good. It can handle highways, it can handle city streets, it can handle rain, snow, night driving, whatever. All the normal stuff that happens every day on the road. AI just nails it like 99% of the time or more. The car does exactly what a human would do or maybe even better. But then one day there's like a guy in a freaking chicken suit trying to cross the road. And I'm not making this up, by the way, this is literally an example that gets used in the industry. Or there's a construction cone knocked over in some weird pattern that doesn't match anything the car has ever seen before. Or there's a 
freaking truck that turned over that's blocking half the lane with debris freaking everywhere and people are walking around and then debris and the freaking cop is there with the traffic thing and he's using hand signals and the AI is like, what the, what is this, right? What is this? Or there's a funeral procession that's going really slowly and AI doesn't understand why all these cars have their freaking headlights on in the middle of the day. That doesn't make sense to the AI at least. Or there's a kid chasing a ball into the street, but the ball bounces off something weird. And then from behind the parked car, you know, there's a ball that's coming out and you know, all these weird things, these are called edge cases. And the problem is that there's basically an infinite number of them, literally infinite. The real world just keeps producing new weird situations that nobody anticipated. Now, Ashok Eloswami, who runs the Tesla AI team, he said something that's quite profound. He said, the long tail is so long that most people can't grasp it. Usually we think, oh, if the car can't handle 99% of situations, that's pretty good. That's an A plus. Great job. Dean's list. Summa cum laude gold star. <laughs> but the math is brutal. If you dig into the actual crash statistics to really understand the baseline and what the cars are trying to beat, which is human drivers, just regular people like you or me, not professional drivers, not race car drivers, just normal people who text and drive and eat and put on makeup while driving and distracted, we avoid crashes at 99.999819% of the time. That's a lot of nines. Americans drive like 3 trillion miles in one year. And for those 3 trillion miles, we crash up at about 5 million miles, which sounds like a lot. But when you do the math, it's one crash every about 500,000 miles or so. We're actually kind of good at driving, not like perfect, but given everything that we do when we're distracted, tired, angry, texting, somehow we still avoid 99.9998% of crashes. That's kind of insane. So if you want a self-driving car to be safer than a human, which is the whole point of this whole self-driving thing, that's the whole point. These cars are supposed to be safer than humans. You need to match or beat those nines, not two nines, not three nines, six nines. And every single nine is exponentially harder than the last one. And going from 99% to 99.9%, .9 that's not just a little bit harder. It's a lot harder. It's exponentially harder. Every additional nine you take adds the same amount of work as all the previous nines combined. Andre Karpathy, he used to run Tesla's AI before he left. He calls this the March of Nines. So getting from 90 to 99%, that's one nine. That's X amount of work, let's call it. Getting from 99% to 99.9, same amount of work. 99.9 to 99.99, same amount of work again. And you need to do this like four more times to get to human level, four more doublings. And that's why every FSD prediction that Elon has made since 2019 has been wrong. Every single year he says, it's the year. Nope, 2019, no, 2020, wrong. 2021, wrong. 2025, wrong. <laughs> and I say this to someone who's incredibly bullish on Tesla. And you know this if you follow this channel. I think Elon is one of the greatest entrepreneurs who's ever lived legitimately. But even he underestimated this and all of us did as well. And if Elon with all his engineers and all his data underestimated it, what does that tell you about everyone else who thinks they can do this? Now, this is where it gets really interesting for NVIDIA and why I wanted to talk about Jensen and Elon and this whole rivalry. By the way, if you want to hear more of my thoughts on stuff like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. But I also talk about this constantly with my community over at Farzad.fm. We have exclusive Q&As. I share research that I'm working on before they become videos. And we have a private Discord where we dig into all this stuff all the time. We actually spent a lot of time talking about the NVIDIA thing on our last call on Tuesday. We have weekly calls on Tuesdays. If that sounds interesting, go to Farzad.fm to check it out. All right, so if we go back to NVIDIA and Jensen, Jensen, this is the deal. Jensen is a genius. I'm not going to sit here and pretend he's not one of the freaking smartest business minds alive, just like Elon. The guy built NVIDIA from a gaming graphics card company into the most important AI infrastructure company on the planet. This is undeniable. His chips power everything. ChatGPT, NVIDIA. Claude, NVIDIA. Midjourney, NVIDIA. Tesla, NVIDIA. Every AI company in the world is buying NVIDIA chips as fast as NVIDIA can make them. Jensen understood the AI revolution before almost anyone else, and he positioned NVIDIA perfectly for it. The guy is legitimately one of the great business minds of our generation. And that freaking leather jacket is like a symbol of somebody who doesn't just follow the rules, right? Because that thing would look pretty good on my mom, honestly. <laughs> Love you, mom. Mwah. But what Tesla has that NVIDIA cannot buy 
And it doesn't matter how much money Jensen has. It doesn't matter how smart he is. It's data. Tesla has been collecting edge case data for years now, years and years. Every Tesla on the road is basically a data collection device. When FSD encounters something weird in the real world, a situation it's never seen before, that gets flagged and fed back into the training system. They've done billions of miles of this, billions with a B. And to solve the long tail data, that's the stuff that gets you from 99% to 99.99999%. That's the stuff that teaches the AI what to do when there's a guy in a chicken suit crossing the road. You can't buy it. You can only earn it over time with data. And NVIDIA is basically starting from zero. They have 1700 hours of driving data that they're releasing, which sounds like a lot, but 1700 hours is nothing. Tesla's fleet generates that in like a day, probably a lot less than a day. Tesla has 7 million cars on the road and a huge percentage of them are running FSD right now and collecting data constantly. 1700 hours is nothing compared to that. It's not even a freaking rounding error. And here's the other thing. You can't simulate your way out of this problem because the whole point of edge cases is that they're things that you didn't anticipate. You can't simulate a guy in a chicken suit if you didn't think to put a guy in a freaking chicken suit. You can't simulate an overturned truck with weird debris patterns if you didn't think to model that specific scenario. The real world is just infinitely creative in producing weird situations. And the only way to learn how to handle them is to actually encounter them in the real world with real cars over millions and millions and billions of data. There's no shortcut. There's no actual cheat code here. So when Elon says Nvidia won't be competitive for five to six years, maybe longer, I actually think he might be underselling it. Because even with perfect execution, even with infinite compute, even with Jensen being a genius, you still need real world data on weird scenarios. And collecting that data takes time. There's just no way around it. You can't brute force the long tail. You just have to encounter it one edge case at a time over years and years of driving. This is why I think the headlines about Nvidia taking on Tesla are kind of misleading. Yes, they're technically competing. Technically, Mercedes will ship a car with Nvidia system later this year. But the long tail problem doesn't care about your hardware specs. It doesn't care about how good you are with chips. It doesn't care about your marketing or your press releases. It just cares about how many weird edge cases you've seen and learned from. And on that metric, Tesla is years ahead. That's just a fact, maybe a decade. My sense is probably somewhere in the middle, somewhere between the two, you know, years and decades, but they're far, far ahead. Here's what I want to come back to, what I said at the beginning about competition. Even though NVIDIA is behind, even though they have this massive uphill battle, I actually think it's great that they're trying. And I think Jensen trying to compete with Elon is one of the best things that could happen for this industry. This is why Tesla needs competition, not because Tesla is going to lose, which I don't think they will, but because competition makes everybody better. When you have two world-class organizations going after the same goal, both organizations push harder. Both companies innovate faster. Both companies are more careful about safety because they know the other one is watching and waiting for them to screw up. The whole industry benefits from this dynamic. Think about it like this, the space race in the 1960s, America versus the Soviet Union, that competition put a freaking man on the moon in less than a decade. Without that competition, without that pressure, it may have taken 30 years or more, or maybe it never happens. Competition compresses timelines. Competition forces creativity. It separates the serious players from the pretenders. And what we're witnessing right now with Jensen and Elon, it might be the most consequential technology competition since maybe the space race itself, or maybe since the personal computer wars between Apple and Microsoft in the 80s and 90s. We're talking about who controls the future of transportation, who controls the future of physical AI, who controls the robots that might eventually do half the jobs in the world, because the same tech that powers those cars will also power human or robots. These stakes are absolutely insane when you really think about it. There's a reason why these guys are in this. And we have two guys who are absolutely obsessed with winning. Two guys who have both proven they can build world-changing companies from scratch. Two guys who are both willing to take massive risks and bet everything on their vision. That's rare. That's really freaking rare. Usually get one visionary entrepreneur per generation if you're lucky. And we have two of them competing head to head right now and way more in the wings. And as a consumer, as someone who wants this technology to actually exist in my lifetime, I couldn't ask for a freaking better situation. So Nvidia is behind. Nvidia has a massive data disadvantage. Nvidia is about to learn firsthand why the long tail is so long that most people can't grasp 
grasp it. But the fact that Jensen is taking a shot, the fact that one of the best technology executives alive is saying, I'm going to try to compete with Elon Musk in his own backyard, that's good for everybody. That's good for consumers. That's good for safety. It's good for the pace of innovation. Even if Nvidia doesn't win, the attempt makes Tesla better. And as an investor, as someone who follows this space super closely, which I know a lot of you do as well, I think it's important to understand both sides. Why Tesla has such a massive advantage and why competition from Nvidia and Jensen is still an incredibly good thing, even if Tesla wins in the end. This is a huge deal for those of you that are Tesla investors following this story. And knowing that a lot of you are Tesla investors, I've partnered with Rebellionaire to sponsor this video. Rebellionaire is an investment firm run by Bradford Ferguson and Matt Smith. That's tailored specifically for Tesla investors who understand understand the long-term story of the company. A lot of times when you try to work with traditional investment firms, they don't really get the Elon Musk ecosystem. They don't understand the long-term implications of FSD or Optimus or the energy business. They see the stock price, it goes down and they panic and they want you to sell. Whereas Rebellionaire fully gets it. They've spent years studying Tesla, SpaceX, the whole Musk industry. They understand why the short-term volatility doesn't matter if the long-term thesis is intact. So if you have at least $2 million of Tesla stock and you want to work with people who actually understand all of this, go to rebellionaire.com slash Farzad. That's rebellionaire.com slash Farzad. And that's how they'll know that I sent you. So NVIDIA and Alpamayo, super impressive tech. Jensen Huang, brilliant entrepreneur, no doubt the goat, but the long tail doesn't care about impressive tech or brilliant entrepreneurs. It cares about data. It cares about miles driven. It cares about edge cases encountered and learned from. And all of those metrics, Tesla has a massive lead, but competition is good. Jensen versus Elon is good. Nvidia versus Tesla is good. And as consumers who want self-driving cars to actually exist someday, we should be rooting for both of them to push each other, even if we know who's probably gonna win. And in the best case scenario, they both do. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this was helpful in understanding why the self-driving race isn't as close as people think, but also why competition itself is such a gift to us all. Thank you so much for watching. I hope this video was informative and helpful and we'll see you in the next one. Take it easy, everybody. Bye-bye.